with Amy K YouTube Live and today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Perched in a Tree stamp set bundle from the new July to December 2022 mini catalog from Stampin' Up! So I think it's a really pretty stamp set bundle and um, like I said I just I love the dies on this one they they really do all the work on the card <laughs> and I didn't do a whole lot other than um, I borrowed a little bit of inspiration from a card I saw in the Stampin' Up! catalog but other than that it's just a few die cuts and a little bit of stamping and that's it and like I said I think it's really pretty so at least you know my personal opinion <laughs> so um, Anyhow, so this is the card we're going to be making today. So we'll start with the stamp set bundle. This is called Perched in a Tree. And um, it's got a pretty little bird in it, a little tree branch, some splattery things, you know, a little kind of background day, something you can use for leaves if you want to. Hey, Rosemary, thanks for hopping in. And then it's got some really good sentiments, kind of some general ones. There, There is one, let's see, the wishing you abundant joy and peace and uh, let heaven and nature sing are probably a little more Christmas leaning, um, but definitely it's one of those that you can use um, for lots of different occasions throughout the year. So, hey, Carol, thanks so much. And glad that you guys are here and Mary Ellen as well. So this is the die set and it's beautiful. Like I said, this is a, a big die and that's what I used to cut out. It, it cuts out the negative, if that makes sense. So it leaves the background and basically cuts out the trees on here. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. And then there are these beautiful leaves that cut and emboss as well. And then um, there's a little uh, kind of, I don't know, like a cluster look of leaves that you can use. And then we've got the little branch that coordinates with the the um, stamped image as well. And there are obviously our little bird die and we're gonna use the bird die today as well. Uh, hey, Pamela and Karen, and looks like Rosemary just got the set. It's a good one. It's really, like I said, it's really pretty and I love the dies on it. All right, so that's the stamp set. Um, one other thing that I did use on it is my favoritest die set, I think ever, these stitched rectangles. I used the smallest of the wide rectangles, I guess is what I would call them. So these are the narrow rectangles. These are the wide ones. It's the smallest of the wide rectangles. <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense. All right. Um, hey, Karen from Detroit Lakes. It's a beautiful day up there in Minnesota, I bet. Probably a little warm, kind of like here in New Jersey. It's a little, a little warm here too. <laughs> so, all right. So if you are lucky enough to have a, a, um, back to school tax holiday coming up in your state. Some states, actually you can get some of the items from the Stampin' Up! catalog tax free, which obviously saves you a bit. Um, so everybody has their own tax holidays and um, uh, Connie says she's been, uh, you like that set, been looking at it, just get it Connie. Then you, like I said, then you're never sad you don't have it. So, hey Nicole, thanks for hopping in from Iowa and Barbara as well. Um, so there are 14 states that are having tax holidays and actually this weekend is Alabama and Puerto Rico, um, both having tax holidays uh, today, tomorrow, and Alabama goes till Sunday, but Puerto Rico ends. Um, anyhow, so if you're lucky enough to be in one of the states that has a sales tax holiday, there are some items from the Stampin' Up! catalog because there are pens and adhesives and snips and all that sort of thing, all sorts of things that actually apply and you can get uh, a tax free if you place your order with Stampin' Up! during their tax free weekend. So yay for that. Um, that's the end of the Water Carnival Festival. All right, very nice. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. Hey, Julie, thanks for joining. I also did want to remind you that Celebration is currently going on from Stampin' Up! Um, for every $50 that you order in merchandise, you get to pick or start picking free things from this Celebration brochure. Hey, Rosie, um, you've never seen a bird that fat? I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll reserve comment because, you know, some days I waddle around looking a little like that myself. So, <laughs> um, but I think it's a cute little bird and he's hiding his tummy behind the leaves on my card <laughs> so hey Sandra thanks for hopping in so there are some stamp sets and some designer series papers um, and things uh, die sets that you can get with orders beginning at $50 or greater there are a couple of things the the pool party and soft sea foam cards and envelopes unfortunately are sold out so those are no longer an option but all the other items are still available um, then there are a couple of items that are available with $100 or greater orders so we've got the amazing phrasing stamp set the really cute tree lot die and the uh, wonderful world stamp set and designer series paper bundle and then if you have an order or a party of $300 or greater there's the perfect pomegranate stamp set that you can get and that'll just automatically be put in with your order or your party if it's 300 or greater 
And then the last thing is Stamp It Up has a joining promotion where you get this awesome planner collection. It's got the planner, all kinds of pages to put in, a stamp set, things to decorate it, some notebooks. Um, you get that for free if you join as a demonstrator during celebration. And we would love to have you come join us and get the demonstrator discount for yourself. Um, so let me know if you have questions. I'd be happy to chat with you more about it. Uh, I see Jeannie and Judith are here as well and Sandra as well. So thanks for hopping in, everybody. Okay. So I'll stop yakking on that stuff and get going on the card. Um, I am doing it. This is one of those cards that you can either do as a top fold or a side fold. I had happened to have a second top fold card base cut, so that is what I went with. But this will also work with your standard issue book fold card where it's the eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. This is thick basic white and I have it cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So it's the top fold or kind of tent fold card on it. Hey, Wendy, thanks for hopping in. This is a piece of paper, and it's a little more muted. When I flip it over, you'll probably recognize it. This is the uh, Splendid Day Designer Series paper, the specialty paper. That's kind of towards the back of the new mini catalog. It's got a whole bunch of foils in it. But the flip sides on so many of the foil papers are pretty too, and it's hard to decide which one to put down. So I stuck the foil side down because I didn't necessarily want the shiny underneath the bird. Um, but again, it's the Splendid Day Designer Series paper that that came from. We're just gonna use a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue to stick down that piece. This should be cut to about four and a quarter by five and a half. And all the measurements and everything for this card will be on my blog tomorrow. And I will link it up in the video description as soon as the blog post goes live. So you'll be able to find out or find all the details over there tomorrow, which is Saturday around eight o'clock Eastern time in the morning. So, all right. So just have it here, those two pieces together. Um, next thing, I've got a piece of basic white cardstock. Oh, thanks, Linda. I appreciate that. Uh, basic white cardstock. This is cut to four by five and a quarter. So it's kind of like the next layer down on a card front. And then I'm going to grab the um, Aspen Tree Dies is what they're called. They're in the bundle with the uh, Perched in a Tree stamp set. So this is the big one that I was talking about that cuts out the background. And all I'm going to do is put it on the piece of basic white cardstock. And then we're going to run it through the die cutting machine. Hey, Pam, thanks for hopping in. And no worries on being late. We're just getting starting on, started on the card. I've been yakking too much. So I'm going to take this and run it through my die cutting machine. And actually, when I ran it through, I ran it through once, and then I backed it up and ran it through a second time. And I got a really good die cut at that point. So it didn't take lots and lots of cranking it back and forth or anything. It cut pretty easily with just two passes through the machine. So I'll be off screen for one second doing that. And hopefully get it centered as I run it through. All right, so ran it through once and I'm backing it through the other way. And then I picked it up and actually almost all of the pieces fell right out of it, or out of the die cut, and they're still stuck all over my cutting plate, which I'm trying to scrape those off because we have a little more die cutting to do a little later on. All right. So like I said, it didn't take a lot of, you know, back and forth, at least in my die cutting machine. Everything is pretty, you know, it, it worked pretty well in mine. I didn't have a lot of fussing around with it um, and you get this really pretty kind of backgroundy looking die cut. The next thing I did was grabbed a little bit of linen thread and this one, <laughs> it's, there's not like a super special way that I did this. I just kind of threaded it through the, the opening here, it went towards the middle of the card. So it's got two trees underneath it and I'm just going to pull a bunch of the thread through it. And then we are going to wrap it back through here again. And I'm going to move it down here a little bit on the card. Oop, there we go. And so I looped it through here twice. Going to give it a little, little bit of a tail over on this side and chop it off. And then we're going to tie a little bow. Um, this doesn't need to be tied super tight. It doesn't need to be in any specific place. Um, the only thing I'll warn you is don't pull it really tight. Otherwise, oop, you'll do what I just did. Now I'm wrestling around with it. <laughs> um, don't pull it really tight because you could potentially rip the little trees underneath here and you don't want to do that um, because then you'll be starting over again. And it's okay that it's a little loose and loopy. Um, and if you don't like the loose and loopy, you don't even have to put the bow on it. I just thought it was a little, kind of added a little pretty extra touch on it. Um, but if you don't like it and don't want to mess around with it, you don't have to do it. So, or you can tie the bow and um, just adhere it with a little glue dot or something to the card front and then nobody will know the difference anyway so whatever works best for you i just liked it i thought it looked kind of cool it wrapped through the trees 
she says that she can barely get the bow tied. <laughs> so, all right, there we go. I think we got it. I'm going to trim these off just a little bit because I got a little carried away on the length of it. And I don't need them quite that long for this card, maybe. Come on, Amy, get the fingers to work. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Some days they work better than others. Okay, so now that I have that part done, then we are just going to take it and adhere it to the front of the card base that I've already got the designer series paper on. Hey, Karen, glad you're here as well. And I'm going to grab a bunch of little Stampin' Dimensionals. These are my little half Stampin' Dimensionals. And again, you can use the whole Stampin' Dimensionals and the minis if you prefer. Um, it is up to you. I like the half-sized ones because they fit lots of different places where the um, larger ones don't. And I don't know, the mini ones sometimes are too fat or too narrow. And then I'm trying to cut up a little mini Stampin' Dimensional. And then I, you know, just get crabby. And nobody likes it when I'm crabby. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to cut up another strip of my Stampin' Dimensionals here. And now I'm going to pick a couple of places here in the trees, like on the, on the um, solid parts of the trees, to stick a few more of those half Stampin' Dimensionals. And again, I'm not going to go too crazy and like dimensional up the entire thing, but I just wanted a little bit of support to be underneath those trees so that those didn't actually accidentally get ripped or pulled or, you know, whatever, laid on the card front weird, so... Just added a couple little Stampin' Dimensionals. And once I get the backings off of all of these, then we'll flip it over and we'll stick it to the card front. And this is probably the trickiest part on the whole thing, is trying to get it stuck on here with it being fairly straight and even all the way around. And I think I got it for the most part. It's probably not perfect, but perfect enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's most of the card front, actually. Just got a couple little die cuts and a little bit of stamping to do here. Um, I did go ahead and cut ahead of time, and we'll be sticking all of these down. This is from the Gold and Rose Gold 6x6 specialty paper. So I cut a couple of the leaves, and these were cut, again, with the Aspen Tree dies. So this is the larger leaf. This is a smaller one. Like I said, they, it cuts and embosses it at the same time. So you get the little leaf veins in it. Um, again, I passed them through the, the die cutting machine once and rolled them back and got a nice um, die cut as well as a nice embossing on it. You may not necessarily have to do that, but that just is what worked for me. So that's what I'm gonna tell you to do. All right, I've got basic white cardstock and you can see my little bird over here that I cut out once already and the bird image from the Perched in a Tree stamp set. And I'm gonna grab some Tuxedo Black Memento ink and I'm gonna ink, ink, ink this up, so. All right, uh, Catherine's saying hello from Baltimore, Maryland. First time caught me live. Well, cool, glad you're here and hope that you like the card, so. And thanks, I appreciate that, I'm glad you're learning. That's, you know, the whole goal is to try to teach you to, you know, a few, few of the tricks that I know and show you some new ways to do things. So, all right, so we've got our little bird stamped on a piece of basic white cardstock. And then I took the light, Pool Party Stampin' Bloods marker, and I'm actually gonna do, again, you'll be amazed and just in awe of my fantastic coloring skills. <laughs> Don't laugh. Those of you that have seen me color before know what I color like, so I know y'all are laughing. So I'm only actually gonna color kind of the, the head and the little chest of the bird. Um, the rest of it, a lot of it doesn't show. And also, again, I wanted it to be a little bit more of a muted coloring. So again, you can see I'm really messily coloring on this. Then I'm going to come back in with my color lifter and actually go over the whole thing and kind of blend it and lighten it all in one swing with the color lifter. I personally find that it's easier to use the bullet tip end on the color lifter um, because I feel like I have a little more control over it. And I don't know, I tend to push down a little bit harder probably than I should um, when I'm using the, the color lifter. I don't know why I do, but <laughs> when I'm trying to do a lot of blending, um, I tend to push down a little bit harder, so I find that the bullet tip end works better for me. Again, have a little more control. So that was really all I wanted to do was just lighten and blend it a little bit. And um, so again, I know y'all are impressed with my amazing coloring abilities, but that's it for the coloring. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna grab this tr same set of dies, the Aspen Tree dies, and get the little fat bird die that Rosie likes so well. And I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine, so I'll be off screen for one second. Hopefully y'all are enjoying your Friday and having a good week. It's suddenly got hot here in New Jersey, so we are definitely in the summertime. So, 
Hoping it's gonna rain again. The grass is starting to get a little, um, not as green looking on the yard. Although that means you mow it less, so I guess that's one, one positive, not having quite as much rain. All right, so we've got our little fat bird here and we've got our four leaves that I die cut. And we're just gonna adhere these. I went to go adhere them to the card I already had done. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna take a couple of little glue dots and we are gonna adhere the leaves with a couple of little glue dots. And I'm gonna try not to go again too, too crazy on the glue dotting here. And I may actually have to grab another batch of them. I didn't realize my glue dots were quite this low. Um, but just take a couple of them and stick them on each little leaf here. So I'm gonna take this leaf and we're gonna tuck it over to this side. And then we're gonna take our little fat bird and we will stick the little fat bird to the other leaf. So no green to be found, especially in, uh, oh, so you're, you guys are all brown already. Ours has still got some green. So um, it's still, it's not so, so bad here. And I'm gonna take my little bird and tuck that in here as well. And then the larger leaf. And I might have just enough glue dots. Nope, I think I'm gonna be out of glue dots on this one. Let me grab more. <laughs> Thank goodness they're in the drawer right behind me. And one more little glue dot on this one. And we'll take this one and we'll tuck it in here around our Oop, I don't want it covering up the bird completely. So we're gonna to try to tuck it in here around the bird and around my messy bow here. And then we will take a couple of the smaller ones and we'll just again use glue dots on those, couple little glue dots, stick the, the gold one to the larger leaf here. And then the smaller pool party. I probably forgot to say, I don't know if I even said um, pool party is what I used to cut. Oop. There, I just ripped that one. Thankfully it was on the back. All right, what is up? My fingers are not wanting to work. There we go, we finally got the second glue dot here. And I'm gonna tuck that one up here underneath. My other little set of leaves. So, uh, raining in Chicago finally, good. I'm glad you guys are getting some. I know my parents live in the Midwest and they are really dry there, so they're hoping for rain too. So, uh, birds in South Dakota don't get that fluffy. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I get a little fluffy, so I can't say it's only the birds here. So, all right, got some crumb cake cardstock and um, Versamark ink. I'm gonna grab my embossing or my uh, yeah embossing buddy, and uh, gonna wipe that down. Try to keep the fingerprints and the stray flecks of embossing powder to a minimum. We're gonna heat emboss the sentiment. So again, the sentiment is from the Perched in a Tree stamp set and crumb cake cardstock. I think I said that. And then we've got white embossing powder. And we're gonna sprinkle that over the top of the sentiment. And hopefully I got a good image on there. It's looking a little light, but hopefully it'll pick up the embossing powder. Yep, we're good. All right, I'm gonna take this and close it up and get it out of the way so that I don't accidentally spray my embossing powder everywhere. And I'm gonna grab the heat tool. So um, Stampin' Up's heat tool has a level one setting for heat embossing and a level two setting for level one setting for drying is what I meant to say and a level two setting for heat embossing. So level one you can use um, with things like watercoloring, something that takes a little bit, you know, an ink that takes a little longer to dry that you want to speed up the process. So you can use level one setting to dry it and level two setting is what you'll use for heat embossing. It does take a minute for the heat tool to heat up warm enough to emboss. So that's why I'm yakking and just holding the heat tool here as I'm doing that. I'm going to turn it towards the image that I've just stamped here. And as soon as it starts to turn shiny and white um, or shiny and metallic, if that's the kind of embossing powder that you're using, then you'll know that it's done cooking the embossing powder. And you don't want to overheat it um, because you can burn your embossing powder. So just go until it's shiny and smooth and then you know you're done. So, all right, I'm gonna grab one of the stitched rectangle dies. Again, this is the second to the, or so, the smallest of the wider rectangles, if that makes sense. So we've got the narrow rectangles here, wider here, this is the smallest one. And I'm just gonna die cut that. Again, just run it through the die cutting machine quickly. So I'll be off screen for a second. Get the die cutting done. 
on the die cutting with the rectangles, um, especially the bigger ones, I tend to, when I'm trying to run it through a die cutting machine, rather than running it through straight along the edge, where there's a big bump and then like a thump as the uh, cutting and embossing machine tries to roll over this, this hard edge, if you turn it ever so slightly at an angle and it, have it go through on a point first, it actually is a lot easier on your machine and on you um, and your project if you actually run it through at just a little bit of an angle. I know you can't always do that depending on what you're cutting and you know how wide it is and all that sort of thing, but if you can, turn it even just a slight little bit of an angle, it's much easier to get through your machine. So that's my tip for using the um, stitched rectangle dies or square dies or anything like that. It's got a really solid edge on it. So, all right. Last thing we've got to do here on the card front is just put our um, uh, sentiment on it. So I'm going to take a couple stamp and dimensionals. Oops, I guess I have a little sheet of them cut up here and make sure that I'm putting these along the bottom for sure here. And then probably stick one a little bit towards the center. And I'm trying not to stick them in a spot where the leaves likely are going to land just so that they're hopefully I've got it a little bit flatter on here um, and not kind of weird and lumpy looking. And I'm going to take, make sure my bow is out of the way here. Try to line it up straight on the edge and stick it down here to the card front. And that's all there is to it. So that's, that's the entire card front. Super simple, just a couple little die cuts, a tiny little bit of stamping, a tiny little bit of coloring. <laughs> You're beyond fluffy, Rosie. Yeah, I'm kind of getting to that point too. I'm like, ugh. It's one of those things where, you know, not quite fluffy enough that I'm excited to do anything about it, but fluffy enough that... I know I should be. <laughs> so, all right. So I've got for the inside of the card, um, basic white cardstock cut to about four by five and a quarter. And again, using the tuxedo black memento ink. And I'm going to take my little bird and we're just going to stamp it down here in the corner. And we will do some more of my fantastic coloring on it. So just coloring the head the same way that I did on the other, on the card front, which I've got my light pool party stamp and blends marker. Just going to quickly add the color to the head and the chest of the bird. Again, not even nicely coloring it, just getting a little color on there, knowing that I'm gonna come back in with the color lifter and mush the color together and lighten it a little bit. You don't have to worry about getting every single little tiny bit of it covered. So just do a, get most of it done and then just take your color lifter and swirl it over it. And that kind of blends the, the color, evens it out a little bit and lightens it all in one swing, which is what I wanted to do with it when I was coloring it. Um, just wanted a little more muted look than the, the brighter blue. And try not to color into the eye like I've just done there. <laughs> all right. So that's it for the inside of the card. I'm gonna grab a little stamp and seal and we will glue this to the inside of the card and we'll be all done. So again, the details will be posted for this card on my blog tomorrow, and I will link it up in this description of this video once the post goes live, so you'll be able to find all the details and um, check all the measurements and that sort of thing as well. I'm going to fold this closed here and do a quick crease on it with the bone folder, maybe a second one because I don't think I did the first one. There we go. That's a better crease. And then we've got our two little bird cards. So that's it for today. Um, I appreciate you all being here. Thanks so much for joining. I will plan to be live on my Facebook page around two o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday, and then back here live on uh, YouTube around two o'clock Eastern time on Friday. So did you stamp the envelope corner as well? I did not, Catherine, because again, I'm a lazy stamper and I don't generally do the envelopes. <laughs> so, but you certainly could. Um, nope, I just did the inside of the card, that was all. So, all right. Let me know if you have any questions about anything. Uh, if you're interested in joining, we'd love to have you come join our team. Um, if you are wanting to place an order, let me know and I'll be happy to help you do that too. So thanks again, everybody, uh, for stopping in today and uh, we'll chat with you all soon.